Hello, uh, welcome to a special episode of Touchdowns for Doe. I have got one of my co-hosts here with me, uh, Mr. Mark Ferguson, aka underscore Smurf. How are you doing, sir? You know, bad. This is exciting. This is like um, this reminds me when the WWF brought on Saturday Night Main Event. This is what this <laughs> reminds me of. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's who. Like, <laughs> it, it, it could get a bit wild because I am on the whiskey tonight. So um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But. Um, <laughs> And we are joined by a, a very special guest, a special friend of mine and Mark's and the whole community's, um, Mr. Matt Cullen. Uh, how are you doing, sir? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm, uh, I'm pleased to be on and uh, chat, chat crap with you guys because, you know, that's what we do, isn't it? So, but yeah, I'm, I'm, liking the, uh, I'm liking the wrestling, uh, the wrestling simile there from Mark. Yeah, was yeah. a bit partial, a bit of wrestling when I was a bit younger, so... Is that no, like you, Vince McMahon, Jack, or... Yeah, no, I'm, definitely. I'm, I'm, de- I'm definitely Scott Hall, mate, so... Oh, he really I believes am. that, Matt, as well. He really yeah. believes it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Matt, we, we got you on. We went to do a show, um, kind of a tribute show to your dad, really. Um, the community has all come together over this last week um, to help raise funds to get your dad back from Germany, which... We've succeeded in doing, which I'm incredibly proud of everyone involved. Lewis, Lewis set it up. Um, me and Murph got the competitions running and just the people, like people have just come together within the community. And um, yeah, I'm super proud of the community for it. Um, but Matt, what I wanted you to do, if you could, could you just tell us a little bit about your dad and um, what he'd done? And um, I know I got his name. I didn't get his name wrong. You, I asked you, what, I said, your dad's called Alf, wasn't it? And um, he was like, no, no. Um, he goes, but I'll get into it on the show. So the floor is yours, sir. Yeah, so um, so his, yeah, I mean, his actual name was Peter, but um, he was probably known to most people as Alf. Um, Alf was a nickname he got from when he was in the Navy, um, which I'll come on to. And it's supposedly because he looked like Alf Garnet. And um, I just, I've looked at pictures of Alf Garnet when he was older and when he was younger and... I don't see it. I see it a little bit in the eyes and the eyebrows, but I don't see it enough to think that would stick for 25 years. Um, but that's where his nickname come from. And, and everyone involved at the football club of Plymouth Argyle knows him as Alf. Big Alf is his username on their like online forums is Alf. So um, he's probably only really known as Peter in an official capacity and to maybe his family and perhaps the people he worked with at Royal Mail um, leading up to his passing. So um but yeah, he's um, he he's lived in Plymouth most of his life. I was born in Plymouth. Uh, he joined the navy in the late seventies, pretty much as soon as he could, could out of school, and um, has lived pretty much there or been based there uh, all of his life. So we obviously live up near Cambridge now. Um, so, but yeah, that's where that's where he's from. That's where he has the affiliation with the city. He did 23 years in the Navy, and then since he retired at 40 in the year 2000, uh, he's done 23 years working for Royal Mail uh, in Plymouth there. So, um, yeah, big affiliation to the city. He's really into into his football club, follows Plymouth home and away. And, you know, the away trips from Plymouth are, are not short. Um, no. <laughs> I think the closest one is two and a half hours in a car or on a coach. Um, which means he's one of these guys that does these weird and wonderful 3 a.m. you know coach starts for a for a 3 p.m. kickoff going to Sunderland or Bolton or somewhere like that. Um, so yeah, I often get kind of WhatsApps from him in the middle of the night because he's just got on the bus down at home park. Um, and yeah, it's really really been into his, really been into his football the last five or six years. Really kind of got back into it. Um, I was talking to my mum actually earlier, so. I was born on, uh, in late February uh, and I was actually two weeks late and I looked at the history of Plymouth games around the time I was born because I know he told me once that he went to an away game around the time I was born and really peed my mum off. And um, <laughs> I, looked, I looked it up tonight um, and he went to the West Brom away game in the FA Cup when my mum was eight days overdue. He went from Plymouth to Birmingham on a Saturday. <laughs> That's got to be a good six-hour journey, hasn't it? Yeah, Easily, exactly. that, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that went down very well. And then the day I, I was born on a Friday, and the day after I was born, they played Hull at home. And mum said um, she couldn't get hold of him all day. 
And while he was at the game, he she was moved from the um, hospital in Plymouth to the naval hospital, and he turned up at the hospital and couldn't find her. Well, yeah, because she weren't there. Um, <laughs> bit bit random, and um, yeah, he's also so he's into he's he's a bit of a train anorak. He loves his trains. He travels a lot on trains. Um, he likes looking up train timetables. He likes telling me if I if he knows I'm travelling on a train. Like when I went down to UK FFC. He'll tell me in advance what platform at Cambridge Station my train's going to be at. Like, like I can't read it on the, you know, on the board myself. Uh, and whether it's running on time. And, um, yeah, and, and the other thing he was really into was rugby union. Uh, played for the Navy. Uh, I don't know when, but he, played, he used to play for the Navy till he'd uh, done his ACL. And um, it, like a lot of NFL players, I guess. And um, What position did he play? I don't know. I think it was a flanker or something. Like that. I don't. I don't actually know to be honest. But one of my, uh, I'll call it a memory, but it's not really a memory. One of my best memories uh, of Dallin Rugby Union was that um, during the 2003 World Cup, I visited him down in Plymouth, and he took me out to his local pub for the Wales quarter final, England Wales quarter final, which because it was in Australia was I think a 9:30 a.m. kickoff. And um, I don't remember much of the rest of the day. That's all I'll tell you. So it's kind of a memory, but kind of not. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, and, and I guess just to go on to the community stuff over the last week, I, I, you know, I recorded a message earlier and I, I can't fit it into two, two minutes and 20 seconds. I can't because I'm so thankful for everybody that's donated, shared it, shared it 10 times over, Um it's been incredible, you know, from 50 quid on there Monday night on the day it was set up to, to 5,250 now, you know, Saturday evening. It's just insane. And obviously, you know, we've got to deal through the, through the paperwork and the cost of repatriating his body back to Plymouth on top of, you know, the other costs that you have. So um, I've been really, me and my brothers uh, and the rest of the family really are really appreciative of the support. Um, it's a real worry off my mind having to organise quite a lot of the stuff myself. Uh, and I, I, again, I just can't thank everybody involved enough. People that set it up, people that set up contests, donated prizes. Um, it's just it's just been great. And and the last thing I want to add on that is that you know I've I've had my fair share of fallouts. Um, on Twitter with people down the years, I guess maybe because no, I'm, you know, I'm no didn't, didn't, didn't notice. <laughs> not, I'm not, 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 not as many as me. Yeah. Not as many as <laughs> me, <laughs> mate. Issue, that's for sure. <laughs> but I guess I'm not not afraid to maybe voice my opinion sometimes. It gets me into a bit of trouble. But I have had fallen out with people, um, and even some of them people donated, and it's made me really rethink. It showed the best of people, and it's really made me rethink where I kind of uh, focus my energy online. And um, yeah, I guess that's kind of the, the final part to it because some of them names of people I've had quite public fallouts with in the past, still donated money to my dad's fundraiser and, and I can't, I can't thank everybody, but especially those people who have put that to one side to, to do that. So yeah, that's, that's dad. I've spoken probably for eight solid minutes there. Um, it's been weird because I was off work this week anyway um, because it was Thanksgiving and stuff. Uh, and obviously we were told last Friday evening uh, about his passing on the Thursday. Um, so I've kind of been head down getting stuff sorted for most of the week. And it's nice to then be able to have a platform like this or like when I got onto BBC Radio Devon yesterday morning just to talk through it and talk stuff about Dad, you know. So I appreciate you having me on. No, no, we appreciate you being here, and you know, I messaged you. I was like, "Do you just want to come on, do a show? We can, you know, you, you you've done shows with me in the past. You know what it's like. It's we just yeah. jump on, we talk crap for an hour. <laughs> for some reason, people enjoy it. So, um, um, uh, Matt, I got a, I got a question though, quickly, if I can, about the radio stuff. Um, obviously, yeah. you're famously known as Matt from the internet. Um, are you going to be now Matt from the radio? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't, because I've already got I've already got being tarred with them in Matt from Twitter and Matt from Good Morning Football. So now it's going to be yeah. Matt, from, Matt from Radio Devon, isn't it? Yeah. I said to, uh, I said to my wife, I've got the face for radio, so maybe that's why I've, I've done a part on there. Um, 
but yeah, I was, it was it was great to be on there. You know, I'm a Plymouth boy, although I only lived there for maybe the first two, three years of my life. Obviously, I have a connection to it because of that. So it was good to to be able to talk through that medium to to local people. Mm-hmm. And, and I, what's been really good is over the last kind of couple of days, I've managed to make some contact with some of his old Navy mates, um, some of the people he sat with uh, at, at Argyle in the home end. I've been in contact as well, so I'm starting to now build a bit of a network, which means I can get some other people's memories of him and start putting together some stuff for his funeral and and whatever. So, um, so that's been that's been good. And he actually, um, in true, I guess, and this is maybe where I get it from. He actually, I found out today, he was um, he got like a soft ban from the Plymouth supporters um, online forum during the summer. Um, <laughs> I, I need to do some digging and find out why, but there's lots of people who talk about the memory of what happened and defended him. And I've seen the thread. I don't quite know what it's about, um, but essentially his thread was deleted and he was temporarily banned from the uh, from the forum uh, until there was such an outcry that he was allowed back. So I guess I'm looking at that thinking that is just me. Will I be doing that still in 23 years' time when I'm, when I'm his age? So, um, so yeah. I have, a, I have a feeling me and your dad would get on very well. Mate. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> but no, um, back to the community part of it. I, as, as you said, like you're in, like so grateful, and you know, I as soon as you, as soon as I saw what happened, and I come, I went straight to Murph because my partner's been through a similar situation. You know about it, Matt, um, with her dad. Her dad was in America, um, so I know what you're going through. I know how hard it is to go through this process, so to speak. And um, I just said to Murph, we, we have to, we have to help him. And then that's when yeah. Murph was like, you need to ask him first. I was like, so I went to ask you and you said to me, Lewis had already set it up, which is, you know, fantastic. I'm yeah. so, I'm so, and I'm so glad that you allowed Lewis to do it as well. Like, um, you know, you don't sometimes, you know, sometimes we're all a bit too proud Um to accept anything i'm the same like you know i'm a very proud man um but i'm so glad you allowed lewis to do it i'm so glad you allowed the whole community to come together for you and like you say you know people you've had public disagreements with have come in chucked in money uh yeah. friends of yours you know it's just it's, it's so great and that uh, you know it makes me so happy and you, you know it renews my faith within this community because i put it on twitter the other week you know i said um I, I know I can be difficult to deal with at times. I am very difficult to deal with, but um, I'm just very. What's happened this week just renews my faith within the community. Um, the whole the whole thing. So just um, yeah, I'm very proud. Um, let's talk about some contests and DFS and let's start with you actually, Matt. As well, you had your first DFS win. What about four or five weeks ago now <laughs> on Fantasy yeah, Game so, Day? So I um. I I think I might have played one DraftKings contest before um, before Fantasy Game Day came around, and it was a good few years ago because when I went to uh, re-download DraftKings, as it turns out, this week, so I could obviously keep an eye on the contest that you're running tomorrow. I already had a username logged, but I couldn't rem- like I couldn't remember any detail. I didn't know what I logged me in, so I know I did at least one, but I don't think it was many more than that, if any. But yeah, I was quite lucky. Fantasy game day in week four, I think I want to say it was, um, which was my first attempt on fantasy game day, and uh, and came first that week. And that was, I think, that was the first week that you got. It might have been the second week actually that you guys reviewed the winning lineup. Oh, it wasn't the week before Nick? So he yeah, we we don't we don't talk about it. that anyway. No, so. we don't know that. <laughs> didn't happen. Didn't I thought, happen. I thought he would have put his line up on like a golden plaque and put it on the screen <laughs> and talked about it for an hour. I, I think uh, he's got <laughs> one at home. <laughs> Self, self-given. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I lucked out a little bit of beginner's luck, I guess. I, I picked a good lineup that week and um, yeah. and reaped the benefits. And I've been in and out of the cash. I've, I haven't cashed every week. Um, I haven't won again, but I won the lower level tiers, and uh, but I was pretty shoddy um, on the Thanksgiving slate this week. Uh, having said that, I, I know Mark liked one of the tweets earlier, but I only missed the cash by two point nine points on the Thanksgiving slate, and I had Alan Lazard, who ended up being a healthy yeah. scratch in my lineup. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can't say with confidence that he'd have played; he'd have got three points. Um, <laughs> 
because <laughs> I've seen him this year. But um, he was like a cheap plug-in flex play, so I could afford some of the, some of the more expensive players, uh, and I just missed out. So, but I'll be back again tomorrow, no doubt, trying to trying to win some money again. So, but that's it. No, DF, I, that I, is my DFS. Six, <laughs> seven weeks of fantasy game day, and that's pretty much it all time. No, I loved it because you messaged me. You were like, oh, "I'm here," and you know, I, I'm, I'm bouncing in my living room. Like, I, I can't. I think it was Pacheco, Isaiah Pacheco, went in for a touchdown. Yeah, and yeah, four, four, and you were like, five. yeah, you were like, I'm bouncing, and I'm like, yeah, I know that it's it's one of the it's it's a strange feeling to describe, but it's it's super fun when it when it's going your way. It's um. It's a lot of fun, and I, I've been there. Mark's been there. Nick's been there. We've all been bouncing around our living room at some point <laughs> watching live sports, but um, it's good fun. Um, so, in regards to this week, we got a DK contest running. So, if you have donated to the GoFundMe page for Matt's dad, um, please do get in contact with me. Uh, send me a DM on the Twitter, and um, I will get you involved in this contest. But some great prizes available, like the top 21. I mean, we've got 80 people in there already, but the, the top 21 people in this contest will win a prize of some sort. Uh, first is two Wembley tickets, a Nick Bolton signed helmet, um, free entry into Fantasy Game Day. If you come second, you win three month subscription to fan- Fantasy Sanctuary um, and the Fantasy Game Day app. And a touchdown box as well from Neo, which, you know, so many, there's so many prizes. You come third, you get the poshest bottle of wine. Someone comes to me. I think it was, James, was he, is his name James on Twitter? James Hubbard, yeah. James That's Hubbard. it, yeah, James Hubbard. James Hubbard comes to me and he goes, um, I don't know if this is any good, but I've got a bottle of wine. And he just, he literally wrote it out. I was like, yeah, that's that sounds great, mate. I was like, to be honest, when I'm when I'm drinking wine, I don't even look at the name. <laughs> so, I was like, yeah, that sounds great. So if you finish third, you get a bottle of wine, the poshest bottle of wine you'll ever drink, and a fantasy game day app uh, token, which go they go down all the way to tenth place. And then if you're from eleventh to twenty first, you're going to get entry into next year's Steve Rains Bowl and entry into Five Yard Brushes FFCC contest. So you've got a ton of prizes in there. Uh, like I said, if you've donated, please just get in contact with me. I'll get you into the contest. Um, even if you've never played on DraftKings before, you can just set up an account, come and play this. It's a free contest to enter if you, as long as you've donated. Um, but I'm going to start with you here, Mark. And um, yeah, d- these are the stacks that I need to avoid this week. So is there anyone in particular that you're looking at for this contest, Mark, this week? Stack um, so I would say, because there might be some people playing for the first time, because it's, it's 80 people at the moment, isn't it, Jack? So imagine we've got yeah. to about 100 maybe by the time. Yes. Yeah. You don't have to stack. <laughs> Sorry, Jack, to be controversial <laughs> here. After last week's Millie Maker winner and stuff, let's continue the right. theme. It's only 80 people. Stacking equal increases correlation. Correlation increases variance. You don't need variance in a 100-person um, contest. However, if you did want to stack, the um, I've been look, running some sims and stuff before we came on the show. And the the it's the Jag no the Colt stacks which are coming up as the most optimal at the moment um, on the Sims, um, which I think is quite interesting. I let's just check the ownership of those. Yeah, they're pretty well owned and stuff. Um, but while you while you're doing that, I'm just going to make myself another drink here. So yeah, no worries. You can do that. <laughs> Whilst I just talk about how many stacks do you want me to talk about, Jack? You... you can talk about as many as you want because I just need okay. to know the ones to avoid that you're going to pick because when me and oh, you agree on stuff, it never Yeah, it doesn't go out, right, does it? So, so, so there's obviously there's obviously four main stacks I think people will be focusing on just based on on totals. Buffalo, Philly, Jacksonville and Houston. Um, all perfectly viable, etc. Um, but one which really interests me and I think is going to be low owned is Kansas City. Um, Mahomes and Kelsey stack. Now, the reason for that is I actually, weirdly enough, watched the game against the Eagles. Um, he was up. I don't know why. And um, the, um, the Chiefs, if they didn't drop drop a few balls, they'd have destroyed the Eagles on that game there. Absolutely would have destroyed them. And um, so I think that um, I think if you go with Mahomes and Kelsey, you're automatically going to be different to a lot of other people in the 100-man contest with your roster construction. And I do believe Jack... A bit of news just happened, which might actually allow you to add yeah. another piece to that stack. Yeah, so the Chiefs put McCall Hardman on the IR. Um, I think he's been on IR all season, to be honest. Matt could uh, let us know with that when he was with the Jets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And uh, Kadarius Tony has been ruled out as well. So there is a Chiefs receiver who just went, well, he didn't go nuts, but he, he was the optim- optimal Chiefs receiver in the showdown contest recently. Um, and he's bare minimum price this week on DraftKings. There you go. Mark, there you go. Yeah, you, yeah, you, no, 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 yeah, no, I thought you were going to say who it was. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm waiting for you to say who it was. Okay, so Justin, just... Yeah, um, Justin Watson, yeah? Yep. Yep, um, he, was, um, he, he was guilty of many drops last week, by the way. Um, but I, that is if, if I, in a single entry contest, that's one way to get different, I would say, a chief stack at the moment for this weekend. However, the other big four stacks I talked about are all perfectly viable. Um, Jack, you know, we've fallen foul of trying to stay away from the chalk too much this year, haven't we, and stuff. So. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> Mainly CJ Stroud, who just, yeah. just, just puts up 300 yards every week. Yeah, and he's 7-7 he's seven, seven this week, Yeah, which is a quite a price increase for him. So it'll be interesting to see where he is. Um, Jack, have you looked at any ownership figures yet? Potential ownership I have. Figures? I haven't. No, so my, my, I'm just looking my, at Stroud now to see where he's at. My, my work begins... Tomorrow. Oh, he's only five percent. Um, oh, there you go, five percent. Mm. So, so that means in a, yeah, um, Jags. So, it, ah. nothing to say about if anybody's looking at projections, projected ownership um, on any sites in a hundred man contest. The ones which are like chalky, I get super chalky, and the ones like which are, I would say under twelve percent tend to go down to one or two percent. So there might only be two or three Stroud lineups in this contest. And if you knew that in advance, I think you'd probably pay up for him. Okay. Whereas Jonathan Taylor will probably be owned about 60%. Pretty so, so, Yeah. So, so, so Matt, who, who, who's caught your eye this week? Um, I, I know you're, I know you've got a lineup in this contest already, but you've, um, <laughs> don't give decided... away too much, Matt. Don't give no, away no, too he's, much. He's, he's actually decided that he doesn't want to win anything yeah. so he's, I, I, he's, I he's built a dummy play. lineup <laughs> he can't play the jets though they're not on the slate no, no I, I would well. i would love it if this lineup won the some of the players that are in it it would be it would be i mean <laughs> it would put that millie lineup last week to to shame it's um yeah there's some there's some there's some good players in there a- albert o's one i know that <laughs> yeah albert o's one I mean, uh, honestly, there's only one there's only one um, player in there that I expect to score any points, and that's the DST. Um, but yeah, I, I did. Like I said, I, I did set a lineup, and then I thought, you know what? I shouldn't really win. It's a contest for my benefit, and also I haven't donated, so I shouldn't really be in it at all. <laughs> I haven't donated. Um, Matt, Matt, can I, I, I Matt, can I just point? Can I just point out? You win game day once, and now you're literally saying I'm having to actively try not to win. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good you are at this DFS, yeah? He's, he's become a DFS pro, haven't you? Mate? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. so good. But I was looking at, um, so I, it's interesting you talk about Stroud, because I was looking at Stroud, but in terms of like a value, a bit of a lower, I was looking at Minshew, and I was looking at a cold mm. stack. Um, and it's interesting. So I I don't know why people tweet about their DFS lineups before the contests, especially <laughs> if the contests are full of people that they probably follow. But I've seen one tweet this evening related to your contest, Jack, from someone who I will not name, um, but they were tweeting about starting Minshew. Um, I have so seen this. Oh, I responded to that tweet. <laughs> did you? Right, yeah. Yes. I mean, they, they, they didn't name Minshew, did they? But they made No, but it was obvious. Yeah. Yes, I have yeah. seen the same thing. So do you know what I would do in this situation? Now that we've all seen this Minshew tweet, everyone in the contest, go the other side of it and play the Bucks. So play Baker Mayfield if you're feeling very dangerous. Play Mike Evans. Don't play Rashad White because he's got an injury today. Um, yeah. Spoiler alert, we'll give it on the show. Bet365, 55 to 1, double touchdown for Chase Edmonds. There we go. If that comes in, we all donate more money. There we go. <laughs> um, um, so go to the other side of it. And you're, Bucks you're D. Way, play Bucks D. <laughs> or play, yeah, just play the Bucks D as well, and you're way different. Um, Minshew's always good for a couple of picks as well. Games in the Dome, I actually really like that game for a stack point myself. Um, but I I am on the Baker side of it. I'm going to stack Baker up with Mike Evans, mm. K-Dot on. Mm. Um, this is not – I'm also not going to play this contest either because I've set it up. I'm just going to put no team in. But I can see what's going on still. Um you're scared you come second to Matt, are you, Jack? 
<laughs> I'm actually scared I'll come second to you. I don't want to come second to you at the minute, Mark. <laughs> no one can come second to me at the moment. It's like, I'm propping everybody up. <laughs> Look, I, I think we can all agree on one thing. As long as Nick doesn't win this contest, we're all quite happy with that. So, no, yeah, one needs, no, no one needs... No um, one needs... What's Adam Petty winning... Peter, yeah. Peter, Peter, yeah. Adam Petty, sorry, winning this contest. Uh, you know, um, Nick, Nick and the races, you know, he's at the races today go and check his handle out he's a proper influencer today proper tout um, <laughs> he's well at it today so um but yes <laughs> go on, go on, he's been dre- he's been dressed by next today <laughs> yeah he has he has he's definitely he's give the uh, old next catalogue a good idea yeah. today <laughs> sorry nick we do love you but you know if you're not here we're gonna you know it'd be the same on tuesday when he's not here me and mark would just oh. feed off each other and you know go at him um <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I'm I am firmly I, I do actually really like that game, the the Bucks and the Colts, but I am on the Bucks side of it at the minute. Um but the way I build teams, I always bring I always have a bring back anyway. So I'm probably gonna have Michael Pittman coming back on the other side within that game as well. Um I, I just love all aspects of it. It's in a dome. Um it's not from what I've seen at the minute, it's not garnering a ton of ownership. This is just DFS in general I'm talking about. Um like Mark said, a lot of people love the Bills Eagles game for good reason. I, 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 that's a very expensive stack, isn't it, Mark? If you yeah, either oh, way, ridiculous. either side of that. Um, I mean, you can't. Could you bring anyone back on the other side if you stack that? If you just went Hurts, Brown, Kincaid, that I mean, that's going to cost you a fortune, surely. Um, Gabe Davis and Shakira are probably your best bets if you're going to do that way. But yeah, you uh, can't do you can't do Hurts and AJ Brown or Smith and Diggs. You, well, no. you can, but you know. You then you're just playing Greg. Up. Yeah, you're just playing Greg Dorch everywhere. Well. I, I don't like Dix is going to continue to be quite highly priced, but I just don't trust him week to week with Allen because you get weeks where he just scores three or four points. At least yeah. with Brown, he's pretty consistent. But that's going to cost you like is it no, 17 and a half, I think, for Brown and Hurts alone. Yeah, which is it's, um, Dix has had some really horrible matchups. Yeah, um, and the Eagles are pretty yeah. awful uh, at the moment in the secondary. So. That's the only thing I'd say. I'm not, I don't really play, normally play them either. No, I, I just, I, anything on that game for me is going to be very expensive this week. So I'm not, I'm, I might have bits and pieces within my lineups, but I'm not going to have a full on stack of that game. I don't think it's just going to be too, too expensive for me. Um, let's move on to, by the way, just before, actually, before we do move on, I'm, again, I know I said at the start, incredibly thankful Matt's pouring a gin there incredibly thankful to everyone that's donated prizes for this competition you know uh, Nia she was one of the first people to come to me um, she said she'd give up a couple of the touchdown boxes and I said look can I have one I know Murph's running stuff so I was like can you get, give Murph one as well um, Tom and Rich fan, Fantasy Sanctuary um, those guys come to me as well I was like can I just have whatever you can offer me? I said, I, I, you know, I was quite, I was quite happy to go out and pay for prizes as well myself. And they were like, no, 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 don't be silly. They gave me the prize as well. Um, James Hubbard, poshest bottle of wine. You're going to have a drink. Um, Gary Fulp out there for the Nick Bolton signed Chiefs helmet. Um, the Wembley tickets are going to come from me personally. Um, I'm just, I'm fantasy game day for all the, all the free tokens. Five isn't there fantasy drafts. point? Isn't there fantasy point subscription or something as well? That's the one. I... That might be on Murphs. Is it on yeah, Murphs? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's not on mine. Um, okay. But fantasy game day, game day for all the tokens. Um, Steve Rainsbow. I know I run that, but yeah, Steve Rainsbow for all the to- uh, entries next year. Five yard rush for FFCC entries as well. I'm just incredibly thankful for like to, towards everyone here. Um, I'm sorry if I missed anyone. Like. Um, I think that's it's, everyone. It, I, I missed I a couple of them, so I apologise. It's, it's, it is hard to remember, but I'm incredibly, incredibly thankful, and I know Matt is as well. So, um, really much, really much. Let's yeah. talk about as we've got an expert here, Mark. We might as well talk about fantasy game day. Yeah, indeed. You can, he can help me. He's more profitable than me now, this year. So I, I'm hoping one of you can help me out here because I can't look at anything because I'm actually recording on my phone at the minute, so um, I can't see the app. Oh, okay. So uh, there you go. I'll get it up. I'll get it up. Right. Um, 
Oh, so, wrong one. Mark, this where... So <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't started my... So I, I will do a value report for Fantasy Game Day tomorrow. Um, I normally release it on a Saturday or a Sunday morning. Um, it will be tomorrow. I'll, I'll get some piece, bits and pieces out there. I'm interested to actually see how much Justin Watson is on that app, Mark, this week. Oh, OK, let's look him up. I'm putting him in the captain spot. Um, 2,200. <laughs> wow. He will be in the value report this week. That, that, is, um, <laughs> that is a great price. Um, is it? And, and Mahomes, Mahomes is, well, he's not cheap, but he's only 7,000, which is the joint third highest price. Mm. Uh, he's Mark, the same you... as Stroud. Uh, and he's he's less than Hertz and Allen, who are both eight. So that, that feels cheap yeah. as well. But don't so, start so, him. So I'm going <laughs> to. So, Mark, can we... Um, <laughs> Uh, we won't. Can we just do like a little dummy build off your course, phone here? Of course, of course, of course. So can who, we, um, who do you want, Watson? We a, yeah, we'll do Watson. Can we just do a full on Chief stacks here, stack here? So yep. Can we have Kel- Kelsey, Watson, and Mahomes? Okay, Kelsey. Do you want to put Kelsey as a tight end or a captain? Or are you not worried at the moment? No, just put him as a tight end for now. I, I don't okay. want a tight end in the captain spot, I don't think. Okay, that leaves us 4840 left, which is on Four. here, so it's right. So. Um, what I running like, backs are we looking at? How much is... I was just going to say, I like the uh, Bucks and the Colts game. Oh, yeah. So how much is Mike Evans and Michael Pittman? What does that mean? Oh. I, I, I think, I'm, yeah, I'm suspecting this would be quite a lot. But um, Mike Evans is 5'8". He's the one, two, three, fourth highest. Um, okay. But it's all right. And then you want Pittman coming back, yeah? Pittman's 5'2". Yeah. Pittman's 5'2". He's the seventh yeah. highest. So that's that's quite. So you got isn't it? so you got two running backs left and a captain. You got four four zero zero per player. Obviously, Obviously Jerome... you can, we can move one of these into the captain spot if we need to, okay. like Evans or something. But... Yeah. So I like Jerome Ford this week. Yep. So do I. How much is he? Is four six. I've seen it four six. Yeah. You're quicker on your phone than me, Matt. Clearly. Um... <laughs> right. Give me some cheap. Right give... <laughs> give me some cheap running backs down. Okay, down under there. four three. They need to be, don't they? Yeah. Um, so, do you know, everybody's, there's lots of optimizers and stuff are saying Javante Williams, but I hate his matchup this week. No, no, yeah, I'm not, I, I don't want Javante Williams. Yeah, James Cook is down at 3 2, but it's against Philly, but it's in a high scoring game. Um, there'll be a KC, CEH is probably, he's second no, on the depth chuck, chart um, now. Chuck in James Cook, I don't mind that price. That's a, that's a fair price, and I like, the, I like the game script there. Yeah, the game is definitely a good environment, isn't it? That's 3 2. Yeah. So that leaves us 5 4 for our next our spot, which happens to be capped at the moment, but you could move like an Evans in there okay. or. Yes, so put um, put Evans as the captain. Yeah. And then you've got wide receiver. How much is Devontae Smith? This is, I know this might be testing it a bit. It is probably, yeah. So we've got 5 4 left. But you know, get... you know my thinking here, don't you? With I Devontae do. Smith going. Yeah, you can get him in. He's only 4 4. Love it. And then we could upgrade somewhere else if we want. You've got a thousand left, so you could upgrade Cook or Ford. Be no, like I want Ford. to keep. I want to keep cooking because I want him to be the correlation piece to the yeah. Smith. Uh, how much to get rid of Ford? And how much? Wow, five what, six. What, 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 what does that take us up to at running back? Kyron Williams, um, Warren, Jonathan Taylor, Barkley, Henry. Henry could be a shout this week. Henry, um, yeah, Derek Henry. Stick Derek Henry in against the Panthers. They've 17 touchdowns on the year to um, yep. run him. There you go. 200 left. And you've got Mike Evans can't be a popular captain, can he, this week? No, I wouldn't have thought so. Well, he is now. Everyone's listening to this. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> everyone. I, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, well, Matt, you've won on this app. So, what do you think of that lineup? Do you like it, or is it a bit too much correlation uh, going on for you? Just, um, <laughs> just read it back to me, Mark. Okay, so you got Mike Evans as your captain. Okay, then you have got Mahomes with a Justin Watson and Kelsey stack. You've got Derek Henry and James Cook at running back, and Devontae Smith and uh, Michael Pittman. I like it. I, I do like it. it. I do like it. I mean, obviously, not... if KC struggles. You know, it's, you're screwed. Yeah, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, it's good. There's lots of there's lots of correlation pieces in there, which I really, you know, I, yeah, I really like that lineup. And you know, um, I, as a DFS show, that's what we kind of go on about. You need to have your bit of correlation. Mm. You, if you're going to stack, um, 
I'm a massive fan of overstacking. I know other people don't like mm. it as much, but I'm a massive, massive advocate and fan for it. I think it, in DraftKings, think... it's definitely good, isn't it? But in a hundred man yeah. contest, you don't have to do a dry overstack. No, except you don't if have you to get, do what we've done. yeah, if you get the game right, though. Yeah, you know those four players alone might win you it. You know, but that was, that was I interesting. Need I, don't... I need to have a look at if um, Taylor's going to be in Vegas or not. Because if she's there, then Kelsey will probably go off, and if she's not, then. He... <laughs> Do you want me to what match? Like WhatsApp her and ask her <laughs> whilst we're live on the show. <laughs> I um, I, I tell you what, I definitely want no bring back in that game. No way. No, no. You wouldn't play a Vegas piece as a one-off, so why would you use them as a, as a bring back? Exactly. Um, you, that's that's definitely something we've learned over the years. You don't always have to have a bring back, but um, yeah, I like the lineup. I, I might enter that lineup this week and see how it does. Um. It's funny if it wins. Yeah, now I've got to make sure I don't save this because then I'll lose my lineup. <laughs> <laughs> everyone will use this lineup now. And just everyone will just split the prize pool at the top. Um, yeah. It all depends well, on who the captain is. Captain Justin Watson, mate. Yeah. 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 To be fair, you should probably captain the chief in this in this. One. Yeah, you should. Pr- you should. St- yeah, li- statistically, yeah. Yeah. So but I you would... could. Um, Devontae Smith is still a possible captain option there. Yeah, the thing is, if you captain Kelsey, then you've got to find another tight end, haven't you? That's the problem as well. Yeah, yeah. so it is Watson, basically. Well, <laughs> it's yeah, fallen I, down. I, it's fallen down. Yeah. Um, be sure to check out my value report. I will have that out for Fantasy Game Day tomorrow. So there'll be loads of value options in there. I've been on a bit of a roll with them. I had a good one yeah. on Thanksgiving. There was loads of them guys who got in for touchdowns. Uh, Tucker Craft, I uh, know he got in. Um, Tolbert was fine. He wouldn't have killed you. Um, he actually, Dak missed him on a deep bomb as well. I was jumping up in my living room for that. but Because um, I had him everywhere in DK as well. Uh, but yeah, um, it was a, just check that out tomorrow. It's, it's well worth a look. These these what, these value guys are last man in guys into your lineups. They're not, don't build a lineup of these value guys, whatever you do. Um, because you probably won't win. But yeah. Um, yeah, they're, they're the last man kind of in, guys. And I know it's been helping people over the week. So um, that will be back tomorrow. Matt, I would like to end the show just um, to say, I, I you know, I, I, I know that you've been going through hell the last two weeks. Um, and, you know, I know me and you are very good friends. Um even though we've had a fallout before, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but we are we are very good friends, um, and you know, once again, I am so proud of this community for what they've done and come together for you. And you know, you are one of the good guys. You've raised thousands for charity with your charity league, the JTT Cup. Um, you know, you do a lot of good, um, and you know, people do need to remember that as well. Like, um, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm. I love you, mate. So um, that's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there with me. Um, if you would like to say anything else, um, the floor is yours, mate. I, I, I guess again, just you know, I wanna I wanna express my thanks. You know, my my two brothers. They're not fans. They're not American football fans. Um, they're not really on Twitter. One of them is, but he doesn't really use it. So not just from me, but from from them too as well. You know, they're both younger than me. They're going through the same thing. Um, and also from their point of view, they haven't been able to keep themselves busy with doing all this admin and organisation stuff. You know, I, I, I'm the eldest. I kind of feel like it's my, uh, I guess it should be me that does it. So they're going through a different set of emotions at the moment, and they're but they're really appreciative of the the money that's been raised. Um, and, you know, I'm going to leave. We're going me and Lewis are going to leave it open for another week or so, just because I know there's a few more people that want to donate that haven't been paid yet and, and everything that's that's donated will help towards repatriation and, and further costs so we're massively massively appreciative of everybody um and i feel like you know i owe everyone and look, someone said to me hey you don't know anyone anything you know you've paid it forward with jc cup and i guess that's right but um at the moment i just i feel so humbled by it and and so appreciative of everybody and um yeah, just want to say thanks, and, um, and I won't. Me and my family won't ever forget the the hard work and stuff that's gone into to helping us. So thank you.
you don't owe anyone anything. Um, and you know, I, I'm, I'm sure you know. I know Mark will agree with me on that. Um, Mark, um, is there anything you want to say before we jump I, in? Out I, I, you said it great, Jack, earlier this week. I think with tweet, we sometimes get caught up with these really stupid things, and when you when you put them in perspective, when something like this happens. It makes you feel a little bit daft some of the things we all get worked up about and stuff. But this is proper. Everyone's pulled together. It's amazing. Jack, the work you've done to pull together the prizes and everything with Murph yeah. is also fantastic and stuff. Um, you you know, I, I hate giving you compliments, Jack, but absolutely brilliant. Like, you know, thank you on behalf of everybody for doing that and sort it out. Um, and um, same for Murph as well. Um, hopefully he's watching this. And... Um, yeah, it does. It, it really does make you proud. I'm literally telling people at my work about what's happened here. You know, people who know nothing about this world, yeah. and I'm and, yet, and I'm telling them about it. You know, it's absolutely crazy because I'm proud to be in it because of what's happened. Yeah. And you know, I I said that in the week. I never want. I don't do anything for recognition. I only do. I will always have the backs of people that are always respectful and are always good to me. You know, and Matt's always been. You know, we've had ups and downs. Everyone has ups and downs in life, but um, Matt's always been good to me. He's one of the good ones. And um, I, again, yeah, I never do anything for recognition. So I'm, um, I'm incredibly proud of the community and the way that we've all come together. That's that's all I want. I'm going to end it there. I, I, yeah, I love you all. I know I'm a twat at times, but I love you all. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you for listening to Touchdowns for Doe. We will be back on Tuesday. Uh, just me and Mark, actually. No, no, Mister Adam PT. Um, he's um, I don't know where he is next week, but um, just me and Mark. Thank you again. Thank you, Matt. Peace out. Thank you.